a message from the okay uh okay sorry uh then it deals with a heat transfer as well and is an alternative to theoretical and to experimental fluid mechanics my work is based on computational fluid dynamics okay let me continue first before we do cfd which is the acronym of computational fluid dynamics we need to figure out what is the scale of the fluid we want to analyze because we might be deal dealing with nanofluids, microfluids, mesofluids, or macrofluids. Depending on the size of the domain, we might need to use a different tool. So essentially, just to give you an idea of the different scales that we might manage in a space, a small atoms are in the order of nanometers, less than one nanometer. We have viruses in the order of 100 nanometers, just one human hair has typically 100 microns. So we have the 100 micron human hair, you have the white blood cells in 10 microns, but a tennis ball is in the order of 100 millimeters. So you have very different scales. So you need to figure out first, what is the scale of the problem you want to solve? Because depending on the scale, we need to use the proper tool. So in this work that I will present now, we analyze the problem of carbon dioxide sequestration. As you know, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is a normal phenomenon, but with the human uh, uh, behavior, burning every day more and more fossil fuels, we are creating a little bit more a problem because we are increasing the temperature of the atmosphere and that is going to critical uh, conditions. So one of the potential solutions to minimize or reduce the CO2 emissions by human activity is by capturing the CO2 that we emit and injecting in aquifers very uh, deep underground and put that CO2 with this aquifer for many years. So we just re-inject them and keep them underground. So this is shown in this, in this uh, schematics here, where you can see the typical phenomenon, how it happens. We go hundreds of meters underground, more than 800 meters, where there are some porous media, which is containing salted water. And in this porous medium with salted water, we inject CO2 and CO2 at that pressure that needs to be injected is supercritical. Supercritical means that the CO2 becomes as dense as a liquid, but as viscous as a gas. So it has this kind of two properties. And density is important because we want to store more mass per unit volume, okay? So then we wanted to analyze how to inject CO2 in these aquifers without setting danger of breaking the rock because that could put the CO2 back to the atmosphere. So we need to understand very well how to inject, how to make that in a way that is effective, but at the same time safe without much more risk. So this is a kind of observation. So we make then the first observation in our scientific method. CO2 sequestration in aquifers can help to attenuate climate change. This is an observation, okay? This is something that is a fact because people have been considering that in the last years. Then we need to establish what is the problem we want to solve. So injecting CO2 in aquifers may break the rock. So we need to understand how to do it in a way that is in a controlled manner, effective and safe. So how to avoid it without having this, this trouble? Then we need to do a background research. We need to find what people did in this particular subject. Then my students and myself, we started re reading many papers, books and things until we figure out what is the state of the art? What has been done so far? So in that particular part, in literature review, then we needed to find, if I want to analyze this problem, I need to find the proper tool in CFD. Well, we need to check in CFD, there are different levels of scales. This is the macroscopic scale, this is the mesoscopic scale, and this is the nanoscopic or microscopic scale. Depending on the scale at which porous medium happens, we need to choose the proper tool. It's like a choosing the proper 
a gun to shoot because we cannot use any tool for any scale. So we needed first to figure out, and for the larger scale, DNS, larger eddy simulations, and RANS is appropriate. But for medium scales, Lattice Boltzmann is mesoscale is good because porous medium, we are talking about 10% of porosity. So it means in any piece of rock that you have at this 800 or 1000 meters on the ground, any piece of rock that you take, it, it has about 10% of voids inside. And this is the porous medium we want to tackle. So this is a very small uh, volume. So this is only possible to simulate with this tool uh, or tools that are in that scale. So then we choose the tool appropriate for the job, which is Lattice Boltzmann. And we start checking what is this method about to analyze this type of flows at this scale of porous medium. Well, we check the theory behind Boltzmann equation, which is based on kinetic theory of rarefied gases. And then we see how it evolved until we get the Lattice Boltzmann equation. That is the equation that people solve at this level of scales. Okay, once we understood well the tool we needed to use to analyze the problem, we continue the literature review because we are still in that step of a scientific method. Then we understood better how Lattice Boltzmann work. We checked lattices that need to be considered where we assume many molecules to be one single particle, and this particle can collide with neighbor particles and then be a stream to the next lattice and so forth. So we needed to understand this. And my students and ourselves, we read and we analyze and we learn how to solve this problem with this tool. Secondly, we were checking what other people did on this particular subject. And we found interesting work on people analyzing injection of CO2 in rock with brine. And we check what they found that is well at this moment used and what is not use usable yet. We analyzed more about the micro scale of the fluidics and we analyzed the droplets behavior. We did uh, some checkup of work by other people of flow within this tiny porous medium using this methodology. And we found what were the weaknesses of their analysis, why it's not possible yet to solve the problem. So we concluded that the major problem that they had is that they were not using the proper equation of a state. As you may remember from thermodynamics, equation of states are equations that describe the relation between pressure, density, and temperature. At this in these aquifers, the CO2 must be injected as supercritical fluid. A supercritical fluid, as I said, is a fluid that behaves with a high density like a liquid, but low viscosity as a gas. And the typical equation of states do not fit well the supercritical condition. So when they use those equation of states, the models didn't predict very well the behavior of the fluid. So my student who was doing the PhD, Magda Gulkardenova, now she's a doctor, she was investigating this problem and she found a very uh, a smart way to deal with this. She said, well, what if we just combine several equations of states? We don't use only one, but we use the best of many of them and we make a kind of uh, crossover formulation in which we can activate one or the other equation of state depending on the conditions of the flow of the fluid. And that was her thesis. She introduced that, as you can notice here in this plot, the conditions that people found were very far from experimental data. So the predictions were not doing very well near the supercritical with current equation of states. Then we needed to formulate a hypothesis because she found people are using the wrong equation of states. So that's the gap. People have done LBM in this problem, but still they don't find the solution because they are not using the proper equation of the state. And that was her hypothesis. She said, if I introduce a crossover formulation that has the best of many equation of states simultaneously, and I run the problem, I will be able to match better the properties of the fluid in supercritical conditions. And this was what she did. And this is the novelty of her work. 
This is the hypothesis. And then we needed to test the hypothesis because after you say that idea, she needs to set a kind of methodology to test the hypothesis. And the testing was essentially making many cases in which we run without and with crossover formulation, and we check if the method is solving better the problem. So then we propose a methodology. And the methodology was essentially the work of many master students that work after Bagdagul and with Bagdagul. And we were analyzing behavior of droplets first to better understand the physics of the microfluidics with Lattice Boltzmann. So Nur Sultan Chumatai master thesis was about analyzing the behavior of a droplet on a surface that is not regular. Then we came with a Margulan Turzinghan. His master thesis was about penetrating a porous medium with a roughness surface and finding what is the condition of penetration. So you have the left fluid. This is CO2 and this is water. So he analyzed this behavior. And then we were learning until we could introduce Bagdagul hypothesis in place. Uh, Nur Sultan Chumatai, his master thesis was about simulating a sliding droplet. All this was building knowledge to learn more about Lattice Boltzmann before we introduced Bagdagul's hypothesis to test if her hypothesis was right. Then he correctly simulated the effect of that. Then uh, Mark Janatikan master thesis was the continuation of analysis of breakup of CO2 inside a channel of water. So trying to understand better the phenomenon. Then Mark Janatikan introduced the first porous medium, uh, pseudo porous medium in which the red color is the CO2 and the blue color is the water. But in this case, Magjan didn't use the crossover formulation. He proposed, he used the regular equation of a state that was not giving proper results, but we started doing the basic analysis. Then the novelty, Bagdagul was ready now to introduce her hypothesis. Then she put her hypothesis in place and she formulated the question of a state. As you notice, her uh, proposal is the crossover formulation and the crossover formulation is presented in the um, dashed lines, okay? The points are the experiments and the, the dark line is the previous model. And you know, you see how the blue dashed lines, which is back the gold model, uh, start improving the prediction of the dot points in the experimental work. So that was the first checking she did outside the simulator, trying to see if the equation of a state that she formulated with a combination of Payne Robinson and some improvements she had to introduce asymptotically to the ideal gas equation, she could manage to improve. And as you notice, the dashed line in blue is her model versus the dark line compared to the circle dots, which are the experimental work. Well, once she programmed her new equation of a state, we tested her hypothesis and she found that effectively in a single droplet, the noise was much less. So the supercritical condition was more stable using the pseudo, using the crossover formulation. And that was a good signal for us. Then she continued and started modeling the introduction of droplets of CO2 in a channel saturated with water. And we had the analytical solution for this capillary problem and she validated her analysis with the analytical solution. And she proved that her approach really improved dramatically the prediction of the sequestration. However, we still found some drawbacks, which is we need still to be able to model higher ratio of viscosity be between the gas and the liquid. And this is something that Bagdagul's model could not solve yet. So then in this moment, that we solve uh, the test of the hypothesis of Bagdagul and analyze the data, we found that still there is lack of numerical stability in high density. So we got good results, but still had some questions to answer. And this is the next step of the work until 2023, in which I have two master students, one postdoc and one PhD student who will join us next uh, spring to continue this work until 2023. So with this, we concluded that the LBM model for multi-phase flow carbon dioxide sequestration was improved by the 
approach back that will propose, but still there are some gaps to fill as a future work. And that's the way science works. We solve a tiny part of the problem and we contribute to science, but more questions come to continue working. That's the way we typically work in science. With this work, we have been able to publish five Scopus Q1, Q2 journal papers and three, more than three conference papers, and still we are preparing more papers. So this is a very productive research that we are closing in the first stage in 2021, and we are starting the second stage that finishes in 2023. Well, now, uh, before, uh, this, is, this is the end of my presentation, but before I continue, I want to ask you if you have any question before I want to play with you some uh, kind of trivia, please. Ask if you have any question. Uh, actually, I have a question about the uh, working group. Uh, so you said that uh, there are some PhD students, master students, uh, but what about undergraduate students? Uh, what like qualities, what uh, knowledge should should they have to uh, participate in such projects? It's, it's a very good question, Alima. Uh, the, the I would say. I mean, we are open to undergrad students, but uh, typically we need them to be at least with fluid mechanics course taken and they should have numerical method and fluid mechanics already taken. And this is a, a, an opportunity that I would be open if somebody wants to join the group and uh, to do work on this area, I, I'm open. We have a space for maybe one or two undergrads and um, I would say they must already have knowledge on fluid mechanics and numerical methods. So you mean like uh, third year, fourth year, yeah? Students. Yes, yes. I would say finishing the third year uh, would be the ideal candidate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I also have one question uh, about your, like you said that uh, you didn't prepare like a lab, um, like you didn't have, you didn't have a lab, um, like, uh, laboratory part of your research, uh, so you collaborated yeah. with other researchers that already have them. Uh, and how yeah. did you find them? Yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a very good. It's a very good point. You know, in in science, typically you you develop either experimental skills or numerical skills or analytical skills. In few cases, you can do two of them very strongly, but you try to be very good at least in one of them. Then typically it's, it's kind of a natural to find uh, colleagues without your skills that have the other skill to play with together. In our case, in this particular project, however, we are working with third party data. So we are not associated with them, but they are working experimentally and we are doing a numerical simulation and we use the third party data to validate our simulations and produce new knowledge. So you might work together with them or you might work parallel with them. So in any case, experimental work is very important because that gives to numerical simulators like us the basics to, to validate the models and to continue producing numerical results. So any CFD analysis has two stages that we need to do always. One is verification and the other one is validation. Verification means that we need to check the errors like round off, discretization errors by making much more fine domains and checking that the discretization is not affecting the results significantly. And the validation is the part where you need to have a partner from the experimental side or you need to have data available in papers from other authors in the experimental side to compare with your numerical simulations and to get confidence in your results. Uh, coming back to your question, Alima, we have a lab, but the lab is only with computer. We have three uh, powerful workstations and, and uh, other computers that we share with the postdoc and the master student and the doctoral student will come. And this is essentially my computer lab. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other question from the audience? Yeah, don't be shy. Aha. Uh -huh. 
I cannot hear you. I cannot hear. Sorry. Is anybody asking question? Mm -hmm. I think no. No questions? Okay, how, how many people are now connected? Just to, to have an idea, because I don't see that. Uh, overall, uh, eight, eight. Okay, well, we have a small contest that uh, uh, your colleague Alima has proposed that um, I very glad prepare. And this is a contest in which I will present to you a problem that um, is divided in boxes. And the boxes, ah, yes, a question? Yeah, there is a question in chat. Okay, in the chat. Okay, let me just see the chat. I think I need to, to, to see the chat, how to, yes, I probably, I need to stop sharing maybe. Okay, the chat. Aha, uh -huh. how long does a simulation last? Okay. Uh, hi, Dimitri. Uh, the question you are asking depends if we are doing 2D or 3D, okay? In these examples I show, we were running 2D most, most of the times. And one of these simulations, like MacJan simulation of the pseudoporous medium, it might take uh, maybe six to 10 hours to run from the entrance of the CO2 to the, to the cavity and moving through, throughout the whole domain. If we are dealing with 3D, it might take one or more than one day. And we are running a multiprocessor computer workstation with uh, 16 processors and uh, 64 gigabytes of RAM. And that is still uh, is not, I mean, this is a very highly parallelized uh, code, the one that we use, and still it takes more than one day if we are running 3D, okay? Uh, but so we prefer to work in 2D until we are very confident. And once we have new knowledge, we jump to 3D because creating new knowledge in 3D, it is very time consuming. And really you can produce new uh, findings in 2D and then jump to 3D to put them in place. I think Paulina Len has a question. When have you decided on your research interest? Okay, uh, this is based on the, you have to be, as uh, I mean, uh, updated, okay? You have to be checking what are the current trends in the world, for example, in health, in environment, in energy, and in water, food. I mean, there are many, uh, several areas of very important interest in the world at this moment, as you may know. And uh, I would say food uh, is one of them, uh, and uh, water uh, is another one, Another one is energy, another one is environment, another one is health. Then if you go in each one of these big areas and you investigate what are the current uh, subjects that people are trying to solve, then you can find one of your personal interests and then you can try to focus on that one and see how in your area you can affect or you can solve some problems in that particular subject. Uh, just, this is one way to go, okay? Okay, any other question? Are you ready to play a, a, a small game? I think, uh, well, let me tell you what is this game, okay? There is a problem regarding climate change. We know what is happening and all people are meeting every year or, or so to discuss ways of tackling the climate change. And the problem I will present to you now is presented in a set of boxes in which there is a, a discussion about one problem regarding the use of energy for buildings and particularly cooling, heating, or illumination, how this affects the climate change. And the set of boxes are presented in a disorganized manner. And they contain the steps of the scientific method. They contain the observation, the problem statement, the hypothesis, the methodology, the analysis, and conclusions. And the idea is that these boxes are all disorganized. 
And we want to present to you, and we want you to find in the first place, which will not be the first prize that a student government will award, is the person who detects in which of the boxes is the hypothesis of that problem. Are you ready? So all the boxes will be there. You have to go through the boxes, try to organize with your mind, how is the sequence of these boxes? And you need to identify what is the hypothesis and write that, I think, Alima, in Instagram, right? Or in the chat box, where? Yes, uh, so uh, there is actually a condition, a rule that you should post uh, like a story in Instagram uh, where you will like answer this question. Okay, only one winner for for per, per price okay you cannot repeat the same winner so first will be that you will identify what is the hypothesis i will present now and from that moment you can move fast try to identify the hypothesis and then identify the first three words and say the hypothesis column the three words and that's your answer and the one who answers first the true hypothesis that person will win the price from the student government. Okay, are we ready? Everybody ready? I think okay. yes, we can start. Okay, then I will just go back to my slides. And then this is the set of boxes. Organize them and find first Price, what is the hypothesis in these boxes? Again, this relates to the problem of illumination of buildings, how they may affect. And there are boxes for observation, problem statement, hypothesis, methodology, analysis, and conclusions. Two boxes correspond to observation, just to give you a hint, because the observation is longer. One box corresponds to hypothesis. One box corresponds to problem statement. One box corresponds to methodology. And one box corresponds to analysis. And one box to conclusions. Uh, can I answer? Do uh, you want to I answer? Think, uh, yes, I think that despite the higher... Uh, hold on. Uh, Alima, should we take the solution from here through the, through the voice? Uh, actually, I think uh, I think you should uh, post it as a story. You can just uh, take a photo and then post. Okay, then. Okay, pick one of the boxes and yeah. say, this is my hypothesis. And then if you are right and you are the first one to say that, you win the first prize. Okay, Alima, let me know when I can jump to the second prize. Okay, let's give like where three we, minutes. Excuse me, and where we should post it? Uh -huh, so actually we have our Instagram page. Uh, you should uh, tag our Instagram. And also, uh, actually this event was also sponsored by New IT uh, Club. Uh, and you should like tag NUMRI and NUIET. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're okay. welcome. Okay, only one person can win. I mean, you cannot win more than one award, okay? More than one prize, okay? So there is a second prize, okay? So I will wait until Alima tell me to stop and to go to the second question that you need to answer. Okay, I think people like did the photo or like the screenshot or something. We can move to a second question. Okay. Second question for second prize of the student government in research and innovations. What is the problem statement? Which of the boxes has the problem statement in this story? Everything is disorganized, okay? So don't expect them to be in the order because it's on purpose disorganized.
Okay, guys, can we continue? Can we continue? Okay, take a screenshot and then answer through the Instagram as Alima indicated. Okay, should I go, Alima, for the next one or? Yeah, I think it's okay. Okay, the third question or third prize will go to another question, but this is different. People believe a scientist researchers are bored people, people who don't care about themselves, just reading, working hard. And the third prize is for another question that proves that this is not true at all. So we are also humans and it's also good to have a balance in life, working very hard, smart, and also having a little bit of music in life. So the third question is, Let's play the Dombra. I will play one little song and you must identify the name of the song. Whoever finds the name of the song first wins the third prize of the student government research and innovations. Ready? Okay, let me change my background so it is much easier to, to uh, I don't know if you can see my Dombra. Not really. Yes. Let me just stop sharing here. Okay, I will just to make it more evident. Okay. Okay. Are we ready? I go. That's the last question of the trivia. What is the name of that song? The first one who answers that in the place of student government in Instagram wins the third award. And this is to prove that we in science and technology are also working hard, doing our job, but also having some time to play music. Yeah, that was really nice. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it this time. Thank you for the invitation to Student Government Research and Innovations. I, I wish I could have more time and probably prepare a little bit more, but it was the last week of the semester, as you know, we are all busy. Well, thank you, Alima. I hope uh, we have the three winners soon and we can celebrate together. Uh, so guys thank you for coming thank you let's thank you our special guest and i think that's all uh if you don't if you don't have any questions okay well then i will wait for alima's news i want to know the winners uh of these three awards yeah thank you thank you everyone thank you for joining us thank you for coming today to watch the presentation see you take care Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.